camera angle. <laughs> Next. Spotlight. Nominated <laughs> for Best Public Service Program by the Intercollegiate King System. Everything you want to hear from the voice of Cerritos College, WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob Flores, here at Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. At this time, I'd like my guest to please introduce himself. Hi, my name is Gerardo Mayagoitia. I am the city clerk of the city of Maywood. Excellent. Uh, tell me, uh, what is your uh, duties as a uh, city clerk? Well, it's just uh, been three months since I actually took office. Uh, I was actually a 20-year community activist, so it's been a, it's been a three months of a learning experience. I still don't know all my duties. I'm still actually learning as I go. I'm still actually being trained, but uh, the city clerk pretty much runs city council meetings. Uh, we're in charge of officially uh, making sure we make sure p the public, when they put public requests in, that we make sure we get the documents that the public needs in order for there to be uh, uh, transparency uh, with the local government. Uh, we make sure that the community has access to any documents, it, anything that goes on during uh, business hours, business meetings, resolutions, contracts. Uh, it's my job to make sure that the, the community has access to all of that. Um, I know at one time, and I know, uh, you know we don't do it anymore, uh, and I think most cities don't do this anymore, is that the city clerk's office would be responsible for running the elections in our communities. Uh, most communities have decided to uh, contract with the county clerk's office and allow them uh, to do those services because it saves uh, taxpayer money and, and it's cheaper for our residents. Um, at this point, I also uh, part of my duties is to you know serve the people. You know, as as, as a city clerk, my job is to uh, you know hear the needs of the community. Uh, at, at times, you know, you would think, you know, it's the mayor and city council's job, but no, it's, it's the job of every elected official, including the treasurer and the city clerk, to be there for members of our community if they have concerns, problems, issues. You know, I'm always open to them, and they know that. Great. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to, uh, you know, get my guest story of what life as a student was like for them, starting with, you know, like high school, were you involved in any activities? Well, life... Life in school in general, I mean, we'll start with high school. I think for most students that are actually listening right now, you know that school can be rough at times. It's fun, but it's also rough, especially when we're talking about taking tests. <laughs> you know, um, when I was in high school, I was very involved. Um, I actually ran for student government. Uh, I was class president sophomore year. Uh, I joined a lot of extracurricular activities. Uh, I was a member of the Knights and Ladies chapter of the Honor Society for three years. Uh, I was a member of the uh, tennis cl tennis team, and uh, I was a member of LULAC, Junior LULAC at the time. And so I, I was very, very involved. You know, cared about my community, cared about my school ever since then. You know. Uh, I enjoyed high school very much. I loved it. I think the four years that I was in high school went really, really fast. Uh, I enjoyed my teachers. I enjoyed my friends. Um, I, I, I got to say it was some of the best years of my life. And right after high school, did you know um, what path you wanted to take, uh, what major, what college you wanted to go to? When I was in high school, my, my hero was my brother. My oldest brother, he was he was in the military, and you know I, I got three older brothers. He's the oldest of four, and I I looked up to him and I admired him, and I still do. And I was very influenced by him when he joined the military. So I decided that I want to be like my big brother, and I was going to join the military as well. So during high school, I decided that you know what, I just don't want to join the military. I actually want to become an officer. So I planned it. I looked into what it would take to become an officer in the United States Marine Corps. And I decided to apply to the Naval Academy during sophomore year. Uh, that's the time when you're supposed to apply to the military academies. So I actually started processing with the United States Naval Academy, uh, where I started uh, filling out my application, started uh, getting uh, my recommendations and letters from 
um, certain teachers that I had who knew my interest at Bell High School. Uh, two of them were uh, United States Navy commanders that were on the reserves. And I also had my vice principal, who I actually worked under, uh, who was a major general in the United States Army. Uh, all three of them, uh, knowing my, my history uh, and my passion of so many years saying, I want to I wanna do this, all wrote letters of recommendation to the Naval Academy as well as to uh, my Congress and my Senate for a congressional nomination so that I could enter the Academy. And what was that like? Uh, at the time when I was uh, processing, I, I had a really great opportunity to, to, to actually go. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I also got involved with so many extra, extra activities because the uh, military academies actually, if you look at what they're looking for, is they're looking for people that are actually very involved in their communities and are showing to be proven leaders even at a young age. Um, Eventually, you know, for some reason, uh, you know, you start a sophomore year, uh, it's a long process. And I realized after a couple of years of, uh, of you know, going to high school, I think uh, once mentality changes. And at the same time, my brother uh, had been working for the Los Angeles Police Department, as at the time they call them station officers. Uh, today, uh, they're known as detention officers, which is really a, a jailer. Uh, and he told me to apply for a job uh, during high school. So, you know, I actually applied for, for a job during senior year, and I guess uh, before I graduated, you know, I was processing, it took about a year process, but I decided that I didn't want to go to the Naval Academy after all. I mean, things change after a couple of years. Uh, I decided maybe I would just go to one of the local schools and go to a uh, ROTC program, which is a Reserve Officers Training Corps, and, and just stay home locally. Uh, and. Uh, what ended up happening was I actually, uh, nine months after high school, got a job offer with the Los Angeles Police Department as a uh, station officer uh, and ended up going to the police academy. And what happens, uh, what are the duties there? Well, you know, uh, at the time I wasn't really quite sure, you know, what jailers did, but what happens is you actually go to a, a police academy and this is the same academy that law enforcement goes to it's just different schools and it's not as long it's a two-month training uh, called jail operation school uh, I actually went to the police academy up in, uh, in Elysian Park with the LAPD it is uh, their training is run by them and basically you basically learn how to you know uh, the tactics of learning uh, a jail uh, learning how to deal with inmates, uh, they teach you control holds, uh, you know, uh, what is necessary and what can be used and what cannot be used, just like a, just like a police officer, you know, there, there's rules and regulations uh, what you can and cannot do. At the end of the day, as a jailer, we're there to protect people, even in the jail system, and make sure that they are safely there while they're under custody and uh, that they uh, get from point A to point B because at the end of the day, you know, uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we're there to serve even even the inmates. And after that, um, what did you do? Uh, after that, I worked, I worked there for about five years and, you know, I, I ended up going to East Los Angeles College during that time, you know, I figured, you know, uh, I just don't want to be a jailer. I eventually want to become a full fledged police officer. Uh, the fact that I was 19 years old, uh, I was one of the youngest uh, station officers the, the jail had. Uh, mostly everybody I worked with, uh, the minimum age was, I think, uh, the, uh, the youngest person was 23. So, you know, me being 19, being one of the youngest, you know, there was a big, big gap there, but I couldn't be a police officer because a police officer, uh, you have to be 21 years old to actually enter the academy. So I would have to wait at least a couple of years. So I figured, you know what, while I work as a jailer, I will continue to go to school. I went to ELAC, and I worked on my AA in criminal justice. Um, eventually, it took me, it took me four years to get that degree since I was working full-time. So I was going to school part-time. So eventually, I did finish after four years and got my AA in criminal justice. And after that? Well, you know, like I said, the plan for me was to uh, become a police officer. At least that's what I thought. Well, after five years of working the jail system, I realized, you know, things changed in, in one's mind. Just, just kind of like I said earlier that, you know, I thought originally I wanted to go to the Naval Academy, but then I said I'll go to an ROTC program. The same thing happened working as a jailer. I wanted to be a police officer. You know, things after five years changed in my mind. 
Um, it was a great experience working for the city. I got to tell you, it was awesome. Uh, I learned a lot, but I, I also <laughs> saw things and things happened in the jail in five years. It was such a negative environment, uh, dealing with you know some really great people and some very dangerous people. And uh, I realized maybe that wasn't something that I really wanted to pursue. So ultimately, my goals changed once again. And what was next for you? After, the, after I left the Los Angeles Police Department, I actually uh, decided that I wanted to go work for the movie industry. And I thought that would be fun. I thought it would be great, you know, a place where I could meet the stars and possibly get a job, uh, you know, uh, working in, in the studios. Uh, obviously, I looked into what they pay. The studios actually make good money. And I went into doing studio security for about two years, working... Uh, working in the studios and, and, and what's you know going on on the movie sets and it was fun you know get to see all the movie magic you get to meet the stars and you get to see a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes I realized after about two years of doing that I didn't think that was something that I wanted to do either <laughs> so I changed fields again I decided to go and thought that I would go work for the school district and uh, I looked into where there would be money to be made. Uh, I started going back to school and to actually getting my major in business administration. I figured I would get a bachelor's in business administration. And I looked into the maintenance uh, and operations of the LA unit, LAUSD and realized, hey, if I get into this area and eventually become what they call a um, cluster facility specialist, I could make a lot of money. And... I decided to join the maintenance and operations of the LAUSD. I did that for about two years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I ended up getting hurt on the job, and that career went out out the door as well. Not because I wasn't interested, I, I but because of my injury. The LAUSD did not allow me to continue in that path. And you mentioned uh, web design before. Well, after, after I got hurt with the LAUSD, uh, my injury was pretty, pretty serious. So I, I was out of work for almost three years uh, due to uh, a very serious back injury. Uh, I thought I could go back to work for the LAUSD, but because of the seriousness of my injury, the uh, Los Angeles Unified School District would not take that chance and opportunity on me. So they instead decided they wanted to pay for me to go and get retrained in a different area. So. I decided to go back and get a graphic web design certificate uh, so that I can go into graphic and web design. So LAUSD paid for me to go to ICDC College where I went for about a year and learn graphic and web design. What's that like? You know, I enjoyed it very much. Learning, you know, at the time, you know, I, I don't think I was that much into computers. Uh, I, I knew the basics, but actually going to that school for that one year um, I was able to catch up on all the latest technology at the time, all the latest programs, uh, you know, when it came down to Illustrator, you know, Flash, uh, Dreamweaver, uh, and, and you name it, you know, I, I learned it all, and I enjoyed it very much, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to get a great job, I thought maybe go and work for the LA Times, and, or, or one of the newspapers, uh, and, um, you know, for some reason or another, uh, I guess that wasn't the plan because I ended up feeling led, <laughs> and I mean led, uh, to go back to school, right? I mean, I finished ICDC college and I went right into another school, into a whole different field. And that would be the, the King's University. Uh, I felt led that it was uh, something that, I'd, I'm a man of faith, I gotta put that out there, and I felt that God had called me in, to go into a seminary. At first, I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't really like, really? Seminary? I never would have even thought that that was something that I would ever even consider in my life. But, sure enough, uh, as soon as I graduated from Keynes, uh, from the, actually from the ICDC College for Graphic Web Design, I never even got, actually got a job. I went and applied at the Keynes uh, University where I started school for another uh, three years full time. Now, when you had mentioned about the uh, web design stuff, um, 
tell me about the benefits, like, the skills, how you, like, used it in, later on, like, for anything? The, the great thing about what happened going to the graphic and web design school, like I said, is not only did I learn uh, those uh, programs, but I, used, I, I learned really to use a computer. And uh, when I went to the King's University, where I spent, like I said, another three years full time, since they only gave me credit for one year, even though I already had an AA in criminal justice, and I was going into a whole different degree, which was in theological studies. Uh, you know, school was rough, and you know they require, and I think here at Serious College they probably do too now, to do everything on a computer with a standard set of guidelines of how the school wants you to do things. And anything other than that is unacceptable. And my school was very strict on the guidelines of what they required. Uh, I know when I was at that school, there was people there. <laughs> That I, I and, and I laugh because I, I don't, I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. I just think it's like overwhelming that there was uh, people there who didn't have any computer skills who actually had to struggle while they were doing their homework, their term papers, their book reports, and and not really have an idea how to use a computer. The fact that I was able to go and learn graphic web design and learn the computers it prepared me to be able to have that edge on learning how to do all the things my university requested me to do on those computers, making my job and the homework a lot easier for me to get done. We'll be right back after these public service announcements. Cassie from Meet Me on Main Street. Uh, my name is La Cherie from The Single Life Show. I'm Chris from The Pandemonium Show. And I'm Bobby from The Pandemonium Show. You can help support WPMD and it's easy. Just visit our website, WPMDOnTheNet.com. Once you get there, click on the Amazon. Good. Are you sure? Yeah. Rock and Roll's that best albums haven't always been the best sellers. We bring you the best of Rock's Best every night at midnight Pacific on the album break on WPMD. Classic long players from members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame played all the way through See, with virtually no interruption. Huh? More than that the hits fast. from Rock's greatest names. Start your day with the album break, good? seven yeah. nights a week at Midnight Pacific yeah. Yeah. only on <laughs> WPMD on the net, where people huh? make a difference. Yeah. I am? Yeah. Saving money today is like giving a gift to your future self. A little money from each paycheck can go a long way. And you'll need those savings set aside to do cool stuff in the future. Yeah, it's hard, but you know, it's the right thing to do. Take control of your finances and make savings a part of your daily life. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org or visit The Pig on Facebook. Visit Feed the Pig on Facebook. This message is brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, the Ad Council, and WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, it's, it's ashtrays, like and lighters. I started exercising it's instead of smoking. Getting support from friends online kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was well, first quitting was key. Hasn't set up. Instead of smoking after I ate, time, so I'd get really up and take like a walk. I missed having a cigarette in my hand, so I'd hold a pen or a straw, uh, anything. And so I knew I wouldn't give in to temptation. I spent more time with my friends who didn't smoke. About the, the commercial I went to places that were smoke free. I didn't stay quit the very first time I tried. I kept on trying, and I learned something each time. Yeah. Do whatever it takes. Oh yeah. No matter how many times it takes. I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. We did it. So can you. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. They pay, they pay. And we are back here on the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Ralph Flores, here at Cerritos College, WPMD Studios, where people make a difference. And I'm back here with the city clerk of Maywood. Now, um, you know, 
school can be stressful. I was wondering what kind of techniques did you use when you know you have to deal with all the stressful stuff like midterms, finals, and all that. Well, you're absolutely correct when you talk about school being stressful. I mean, life. I was talking to a student on the way over here. You know, I've never been to your campus. So I was a little lost. And I was able to meet this really great student who actually said, I'll walk you over there. And I was having this conversation with her about exactly this. And I was telling her, you know what, life is rough. And I believe that schools test you for a reason. And that reason is that they're preparing you for real life. Because when you leave school, the tests don't stop. The tests actually continue with real life situations that you'll face in the future once you leave, once you graduate here from school. When I was in school at King's University, I got to tell you, and I'm sure most of the students that are out there listening, you'll, 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 you'll agree that during uh, midterms and finals and research papers and trying to study all at the same time overwhelms you. I know it overwhelmed me. There was days at King's University where I, I just, my mind would just go blank. I just, I, I just couldn't think anymore. I would, I would stand up, leave the library where I basically lived five days a week. And that's what other students would always tell me because I, I, I pretty much was in school all day. I would be there from 11 a.m. sometimes till 11 o'clock at night, 12 hour days, studying, trying to get the homework done. And yes, very stressful, very overwhelming. Um, what did I do? The days that I couldn't do anything anymore in the sense that my mind would just freeze, I would stop because my mind wasn't going anywhere anyways and I would take a walk outside, enjoy the sun, go get some air, maybe go take a nap in my car and just try to rest somewhat because that's, I realized that when you're stressed out that's what your body needs is it's just a time and a period to recuperate, to recover and I think that did wonders for me. Um, even if I just took a two hour break, the fact that I did that would allow my mind just to be refreshed and be able to come back into the library and start studying, start doing those term papers. Um, is there a really way of, of, of dealing uh, and getting rid of stress? I think your, your body just, I think we all deal with it. It's part of human nature. But those are the things that I did. I mean, obviously there was times, I'll be honest, I'm going to keep it real today here with you guys that there was these days that I go outside and my body couldn't take it so I I would cry. My I, I would literally cry from the stress and, and, and the pressure that I was under. But you know what sometimes a good cry was a good way to let things out as well. So you know I don't know if there's people out there that would uh, that have been there but even crying sometimes is a good thing to allow your body to decompress from the pressure and the stress that is it's feeling and so at the end of the day, you know what, um, one of the things I also did, and I know, uh, and like I said before, is that I am a man of faith. I would pray a lot, you know. I, I would go out and pray and ask God to help me, help me get these things done. I would say things that I, I knew that I couldn't do it alone, but I knew that he would help me. I knew that we could do it together, and we did. And now, tell me about your city. Um, what are some traditional events? Uh the, um, you know, the city of Maywood is known for? Well, you know, the city of Maywood, you know, we're a 1.2 square mile city in the southeast, uh, part of the gateway cities. We are one of the smallest cities in the state of California, but one of the most congested cities in the nation. Uh, we have at least about, give or take, about 35,000 people living in an area, like I said, of 1.2 square miles compared, and, I, and I'll make a comparison there so you'll understand the scope of it, uh, where we have the city of Commerce just east of us, which is almost four and a half, 4.5 square miles with a population of 12,000. Um, we don't have the infrastructure that Commerce has or Vernon, which is a, exclusively an industrial city. We, all, we, we, we have people and we're very limited on funds. Uh, there was a time, I've been living there since 1974, uh, the demographics of the community, when I moved in, 90% uh, of the city was mostly Anglo. Today, the demographics of the entire city, I would say 98% of the city is uh, Latino immigrants. Uh, 
back when I moved in, uh, I mean, we had a lot of activities, you know, we, we, we had a lot more money than we do today. And uh, the city right now is struggling to survive. Uh, we went from being in the red to the green just within the last year. Uh, so the fact that we didn't have all the money that we had in the past has limited us to doing uh, less events than we did before. But I will give you a comparison of what we used to have and what we do now. Uh, growing up, you know, we had uh, events during Christmas. We would have the Santa Claus fly-in. Well, we actually have Santa Claus be flown in in a helicopter every year. We don't do that anymore. We can't afford it. Uh, we used to have the Easter egg hunt. We used to have uh, public works and recreation. We, we used to have public works department. We had a uh, <clears throat> we we used to have the uh, parks and recreation department. Uh, we had full-time staff at City Hall, uh, and, and I mention this for a reason. Uh, we don't have all those luxuries anymore. Today, we only have partnerships. We no longer have the par Public Parks and Recreation Department. We no longer have Public Works Department. Uh, all that stuff's been contracted out, and the reason we've had to do that is to basically save money and resources, and uh, therefore, our, our, our resources in the city have went from being in abundance when I used to move, when I moved in, to very limited today. Hopefully, we're hoping that it will change in the future and we're still working on it. Uh, but, you know, uh, we used to run football teams, uh, baseball teams for, for our youth. All of that is gone. We, we don't have any of that now. And it's really sad and it's really unfortunate. And, you know, uh, some of these things also happen, and I'm going to be very blunt and very honest because I'm very passionate about this stuff. Uh, you know, in politics, things happen. And, you know, a couple every two years we have elections, and we vote the people that we think are going to do what's right for our communities. Uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, some of our, uh, and I said not, not today, um, let's make that clear, not, not our public officials there today, but some of our public officials that were there, some of our past mayors, some of our past council members who are no longer in office, uh, actually made some decisions uh, to start getting involved with the city of Bell. Uh, and I'm not talking and I'm not trying to come down on Bell, but we're talking about the scandal that broke a couple of years with uh, the whole situation that went statewide and across the country with Bob Rizzo. Our, 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 our past mayors, council members got involved with Bob Rizzo and Angela Spasha and that whole regime that we know as of today were doing things that shouldn't have been done and a lot of them ended up going to prison. Uh, I want to make sure that the people that are listening understand what would happen. Uh, Angela Spasha, who was the assistant city manager under Bob Rizzo, was brought in into the city a couple, a few years ago, not a couple, a few years ago. and. Uh, was running our city. A lot of people look at Bell and say, oh wow, you know, this only happened in Bell. No, the whole reason that the Bell scandal broke out was because the city of Maywood was the first victim of it. When Angela Spasia, the assistant city manager of Bell, came in, she was being paid by the city of Bell to run the city of Maywood. For some reason or another, I don't know what they were thinking, but apparently they felt that they were going to be able to merge all the departments together and make Bell and Maywood just have, I guess, one police department, one public works department, one parks and recreation department. But I guess they didn't see the backlash that came from all the unions and, and the police officer associations that all got involved. And of course, the LA Times got involved because the things that were going on were unheard of. They, they have never, they had never happened ever anywhere in the state of California or anywhere in the nation for that fact to have a city manager or an assistant city manager from the city of Bell that's being paid by the taxpayers of Bell to run the neighboring city? Unheard of. Well, when she came over, she fired all our employees. She fired all our police department. She fired all our public works department. She fired all our city employees. About a hundred in total. You know, and I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about right now because I still remember that hurt and pain that she caused all these employees that have families and children. You know, it was a very hard and unfortunate time for Maywood, but also for the city of Bell. 
And at the same time, I think it was a time of uh, healing and, and, and bringing out the darkness into the light because the fact that she came and what she did allowed the LA Times to come and investigate and break that whole story and that whole scandal that happened in the city of Bell. So answering your question, uh, the programs that we have in Maywood right now are very limited due to those facts. Uh, I know that uh, we still today have, you know, we do uh, senior food distribution programs. Uh, the, the city building that was run by the city, we did a partnership with the YMCA who now does uh, programs for our community and they run our pool. Uh, and, they, and they're a great organization and they do great work, you know. But, you know, uh, but, we, but at the end of the day, we, we are still very limited on the things that we can offer our community. But right now, uh, with the new present council, I will say this, it's a plus. We're looking at ways to generate revenues. And we're, we're looking at uh, doing grants at, at, at trying to bring in uh, those monies that we lost so that we can actually start bringing back those football t-shirt leagues for our community. How about, um, tell me about the commissions. In the city of Maywood, since we're such a small com uh, community, we only have one, one commission, and that commission is the planning commission. And we have a total of five planning commissioners. And they're very vital and they're very important to our community because, you know, they're the ones that are basically, uh, listening to the new uh, way the city will be transformed and what it will look like with the new projects, what people want to do with their homes, their buildings. And so, you know, they're, they're the ones that, you know, look at these projects and normally see if it's something that should be done or shouldn't be done. And then they advise the city council if this is the direction that uh, the council would want to take or not, you know. But that's about the only commission we have in the city of Maywood. So you have years of experience of uh, <clears throat> being involved. Um, what kind of tips would you give uh, to people who they've never been involved in their city and how can they move up? Well, you know, I've been involved in politics for 20 plus years. Um, I think like I mentioned it earlier, I've only been in office as of December. Uh, I think I'm going on three months now uh, with the new title as a city clerk with a new, a new hat, I call it. Uh, but to me, I'll be honest with you people, I will always be the same person. Uh, I, I am the guy who 20 years ago got involved, uh, seeing my community, seeing things that I didn't agree with, seeing things I didn't like that were going on. And I realized, you know, I have a choice as you do, as everyone that's listening to this radio station, as you do, Rob, we all have 